Hello, this lesson is going to be about working with buttons and form fields in InDesign. So go ahead and go into the Lesson 10 folder that you would have downloaded and go ahead and open this 10 start file and it should bring you to this document here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my Layers panel. Again, if you can't see it, just go to Window and Layers. And you'll see that there are two layers in here. Layer one has our design elements, so our text and the pictures down here, whereas the second layer, the form elements, has the section with our text boxes and our where we're going to put our buttons and everything like that. So I don't want to accidentally add things to my decorative layer here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that lock button. So that way everything I'll add from this point on will be added into the form elements layer. So once we do that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And I'm going to focus on this area where it has like first name and last name. Now, if you hover over some of these boxes here, you'll see that there is a red dashed line going around them and there is a little symbol in the lower right hand corner. That's just telling you that that's a form and the symbol down the corner here is telling you that it's a text field. So the user would type information into these boxes. It's not going to be a set option like say the radio buttons or the list or combo boxes. So first up what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Window, Interactive, and go to Buttons and Forms because we're going to be using this panel a lot. And I'm just going to drag it over to the side here. And then with the Buttons and Forms panel open, I'm going to select the text field that's underneath First Name. And you can see all of the settings that are turned on for it. So it's been named whenever you make a new form you're going to always want to name it because as you add more forms to a document it can be real easy to, lo to lose track of what is what so it's good to keep everything named there's a description so when we export this as a pdf when the user hovers over something whatever we type in the description will appear in a little uh, box. It's also referred to as like alt text. So when the user goes to hover over something, they'll get a little description telling them what they're supposed to input into that box or what the buttons are for. And then we've got printable turned on. That just means that if they were to print this out, then these boxes and the buttons would also be printed out as well. So we want to make sure that that's going to be turned on for our other objects. Then you can also control the font and font size and the style of the information that's put into the form. So what we want to do is we actually just want to duplicate this first name text field. So you're going to hold either Alt or Option. Make sure this text field is selected. Hold Alt or Option. And then just drag straight over. And you want to make sure the left edge of the text field is in line with the uh, left edge of the last name text frame. And you can see when we created this duplicate over here in the buttons and forms panel, it renamed it first name one because no two forms can have the same name. So I'm going to go over here and just change this to the last name. And then it should have copied everything else, but we're going to want to change the description as well. So that way it says last name and then just hit enter. And that's all we need to do for this. Now we are going to make a text field from scratch. So I'm just going to deselect the last name there and I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. And then I'm going to create a rectangle that's roughly the same height and width as the city one and if you have your smart guides turned on 
it should kind of tell you if you have the height and width about the same because you'll see a light green little arrow appear at the end of the shape you're making but it'll also appear at the other shapes that are at the same width so I'm just gonna get that about the same size I'm just gonna bring this in a little bit because I think I'm a little long and there was an object style that was set up so that way we can easily just duplicate the settings that these text fields use onto this one here so I'm just gonna go to window styles object styles and you'll see a style named text field box so make sure under email address you have this rectangle we just made selected and then go to text field box and now it should look like these boxes up here so i'm going to ahead and just close that so we won't need it but now i need to go over into my buttons and forms panel and specify what kind of form this is and change all the settings so up in type I'm going to set this to a text field and then I'm going to name it email address and I'm going to go down to description and type email address again make sure printable and scrollable is turned on what scrollable is is that if someone types something that goes past the width of the box here is it will keep typing and it will allow that person to scroll to see the rest of the address because while something like names aren't gonna probably exceed that space emails can get pretty long so you want to make sure that scrollable is turned on just in case someone has a really long address. So we want Minion po Pro and Regular. But I want to change the font size to 10. And I'm just going to deselect it because I'm happy with how it is right now. Next is we're going to make radio buttons. Uh, radio buttons are usually uh, circle buttons and they allow you to pick one choice out of a selection. So you'll see them here in a sec. So I'm going to go over to my button forms and I'm going to go to the panel menu. And there should be an option here that says sample buttons and forms. I'm going to click that and it'll give me a bunch of pre-made objects that I can use as buttons or forms. So the first one I want is 016. So it should be three circular radio buttons with a green dot in it. I'm just going to click and drag it over to here and align the left edge with that guide and align the top of the frame to the top of our choices there so it's going to be really big at first that's all right what we're going to do is we're going to scale it so i'm going to make sure my reference point is up in that upper left hand corner and then I'm just going to right click transform scale and I'm going to scale it down to 40% and you can use your arrow keys to kind of nudge these up and down if you need to fix the placement a little okay I'm just going to move this off to the side because we'll need this here in a minute but I'm going to go over to my buttons and forms panel and with all these still selected I want to go ahead and name them form of assistance and I'm going to put that in the description box as well and now I'm just going to click out my pasteboard so that way I have nothing selected and I'm going to go back and I'm going to select this radio button that's next to education now each radio button will return a value and we can set that value to be anything we want so I'm going to go down down to the bottom of this panel here where it says button value for the first one I want that to be education and then in appearance you can see there are a bunch of options in here I'm gonna scroll up and go to normal off so that way when this document is first opened up none of these are going to be set to on or selected 
they'll all just be empty and then who's ever filling out the form can just click which one they want. And now I'm going to do something similar for the other two buttons as well. I'm going to set the second one to garden maintenance. Make sure it's set to normal off and then I'm going to go to the third radio button and this one is going to be financial donation. Okay, next up is I'm just going to click my pasteboard so I have nothing selected and I want to add a check mark so that way people can opt in to get a quarterly newsletter. Now a check mark is similar to the radio buttons except there's usually only one form and it's usually set to either on or off. So I'm going to go back into these sample buttons and I want number one and I'm going to click and drag it over here. Now you're either going to hold command shift or control shift and we're just going to scale this down manually so that way it's the same width as our text frame over here. And then I'm going to go over into my panel and I'm going to change the name to receive newsletter. I'm going to set the appearance to normal off so that way it's not automatically selected when they first open the document. And in the description, I want to type in check here if you'd like to receive our newsletter. And then just make sure that the elements that you've been adding so far are still on the form elements and if they are they should all be uh, highlighted or surrounded with red lines. So just always kind of double check you're still working on the correct layer. If you locked layer one you shouldn't have to worry too much about things getting put in the wrong layer when you work. Next up is we're gonna create a combo box. A combo box is a type of menu that lists uh, multiple predefined choices and the user can only select one of those choices. So I'm going to go down to this white box that we have here. I'm going to select it and I'm going to change type to combo box and then I'm going to name it newsletter format. And then down in description, I'm going to type in choose which way you'd like to receive our newsletter. And then make sure the font size is set to 10. So now I'm going to add some of the options that our user can pick from. So down where it says list items, I'm going to click in here. And the first one is going to be print publication colon standard mail. And then to add it to the list, I just hit that plus sign and you'll see it's added down to the bottom here. So the next one is going to be Adobe PDF colon email attachment. And then I'm going to hit that plus sign. And the last one is going to be a link to online newsletter colon email. And then we'll add that to the list. All right, once I have these items in there, I'm going to check mark sort items and you'll see it changes the order to alphabetical. And then I'm going to click and select print publication standard mail. So that will be the item that is selected when they first open the document. And that's going to be the default. And if they want to change it, they just click on this box here and it'll give them a drop down to pick from. Next is I'm going to close these. And we're going to set a tab order. Now what a tab order does is when a user has this opened up in Adobe rather than having to click on each 
field, they can click in the first one, type what they need to, and then when they hit tab, it'll bring them to the next option. So we're going to set that order so that way it goes from one object to the next and it doesn't bounce around in an odd order. So make sure nothing's selected and I'm going to go to Object, Interactive, and down at the bottom you'll see Set Tab Order. So there are a couple ways to move things. You can either select it and hit move up and down, or you can just click and drag it to the right place. So kind of look at your document and put everything in the logical order. So it should be first name, last name, address one, address two, then it'll be city, state, zip, email address, then form of assistance is this section, receive newsletter, and then newsletter format. So I'll hit OK once I'm happy with my list here. And now I'm going to add a submit button. Now there's already a shape here that is titled submit, but we need to connect the actions to it so Adobe knows what to do when it's clicked on. So I'm going to go back to buttons and forms. Make sure you have this submit button selected. And in type, I'm going to go to button. And then in the name, I'm going to type in submit form. And then down description, I'm going to type send the completed form via email. And then next to actions, you'll see this plus sign. Go ahead and hit that and it gives us a bunch of these options. Go ahead and find submit form. It should be near the bottom. And I'll add the submit form action to this object. And down in the URL, we want to send this newsletter to a specific email. So we're going to do mail to colon. And then without putting a space, just go ahead and type in your email. So again, type in mail to colon, no spaces, and then add the email address. Mail to is the command that tells the program or the computer that it needs to bring up email. And in this particular case, when it does, it will add this filled out PDF form as an attachment. So go ahead and just hit enter. Okay, now something else we want to change is the rollover effect. You might have seen on some of the other fields we pick under appearance, there are a bunch of different options. What that does is under circum certain circumstances, you can set your form to look a little differently. So what rollover is, is it means that when the user's mouse hovers over the object, we can set it to look a little differently. So that way they know it is a clickable object. And then you can also change what the object looks like when they actually do click on it. We're just going to change rollover. So just click on it to highlight it. And you should see that it will add the object's current appearance. We're going to go ahead and change that by going up to the fill swatches. So up in your control panel, it's that top square. And in tint, we're going to type in 50. So that way when they hover over, it'll be a slightly lighter color. And I'm just going to click normal again. So that way when the document is brought up, normal is going to be the default state. So there are all kinds of different uh, buttons and forms you can pick from in InDesign. The main ones are going to be a button. This is the most vers versatile interactive element. And you can attach a lot of actions to these objects. So like what we did with the submit button, when that's clicked, we have it send an email. Uh, with these, it returns a value back. So if we had a system set up, it would add that value to that account. Uh, next one is the checkbox, which is what we did here for the newsletter. You use these for yes or no options. 
Another type of form is the combo box, which is what we did down here to select the newsletter format. The combo box allows you to provide a list and the user can pick one from that particular list. A list box is really similar to a combo box in that you have a few options that the user can pick from, but the difference between a combo box and a list box is that in the list box you can pick more than one answer whereas the combo box only lets you pick one. And then you've got radio but buttons which are good for either or choices and again with this one the user can only pick one answer. And then you've got a signature field where you can have someone add their signature to a document so they can just draw on it. And then you've got the text field which is what we've added over here and that's where someone can put their cursor in there and they can just type in their answers. Okay so when we go to export this as a PDF we're not just going to do PDF print. We want to set it to PDF interactive. So go ahead and go to file, export, and just in the lesson 10 folder just export it as your last name crack 10 make sure the format is set to Adobe PDF interactive not print so make sure that says interactive at the end and then we're gonna hit save and it'll bring us to this dialog box so there are a couple things that we want to change the first is you're gonna go to view and it might say default, go ahead and change that to fit page. So that way when they open up the document in Adobe Acrobat, they can see the whole page at once. And they don't have to like zoom in and out to see everything. We wanna make this as easy of an experience for them as possible, because if we make it difficult, they're less likely to fill out the form and get it back to us. So make sure view is set to fit page. And then down in options where it says forms and media, make sure that's set to include all. So that way the user can actually interact with the forms and it's not just going to put their appearances there. And then go ahead and hit export. And it should bring up our document and you can go ahead and test it out. And if you hit tab, you see it should move off to the next Thing. So you can kind of mess with this to see how everything works. So you can hit the submit button to see if you did the mail to command correct. But once you see that you're happy with it, go ahead and save the InDesign file as your last name underscore prac10. And then make sure you have the PDF export in there as well and then just turn it all into canvas.